Welcome back to another tier list video. This time, Senran Kagura is going to be the focus here. I'm going to rank both spin-offs and mainline games. A lot of our opinions on franchises are formed by the order we play games in. Like with Neptunia, I've been playing Senran Kagura games since right from the start and played each game as it came out, so that's going to be my perspective. And in order to make that come across in this video, I'll be going in that order as well. Before we get started, let me explain the various ranks. S is the highest, F is the lowest. There seems to be a variation with these rank charts, as some people like to omit one or two of the lower ranks before F. But I'm not going to do that. S rank is, as you can imagine, the highest one, because that's the first letter of the alphabet. Games that fall under that category aren't necessarily perfect, but they do have some sort of charm that transcends less than stellar aspects of the game. C rank is going to be right in the middle, enjoyable but perhaps an ordinary experience. Whether it's middling in every or most respects, a game that had potential to be a higher rank but falls short, or even the other way around. F rank is the penalty box, or the red card, or the black flag, whatever sport you prefer. Those games are ones that I'd rather not play. I think that covers the ranks pretty well. Let's get started with ranking the games. We'll go mainline first, then spin-offs. And also keep in mind that we're going to be covering games that have uh, Western releases. As I haven't played Japanese-only games, like New Link, for example, you won't be seeing them in this video. But if you have some experience with some of those, please feel free to comment your opinions on them. And that also applies to everyone else who wants to share their rankings. The mainline titles consist of five or six games, depending on how you view things, and there's two timelines. There seems to be at least two naming conventions. There's the 3DS timeline and the PlayStation timeline. The 3DS timeline consists of only two games, which are 3DS games, as you can imagine, Senran Kagura Burst and Senran Kagura 2 Deep Crimson. All other mainline titles were originally PlayStation games and share the same timeline, hence being called the PlayStation timeline. I've also heard the 3DS timeline being referred to as Timeline 1 because it came first. Guess what the second timeline is called? You're right, it's the Timeline 360. I guess if there's a third timeline, it'll be called the Timeline 1, and then we're going to have to call Timeline 1 the original timeline. You know, because that's how naming conventions work, right? The very first game of the series, Senran Kagura Burst for the 3DS, I personally rank as a D. Technically, this is an enhanced version of the very first game, the difference being the addition of being able to play not just through the Hanzo story, but Heavy Joe as well. So essentially, it's still the first game because it's contained within. It's a side-scrolling beat-em-up. Despite the 3D graphics, the game plays in a mostly two-dimensional manner. You can go in and out a little bit. While I do enjoy the story and basic gameplay idea, there's just too much unrefinement with the gameplay. The game stutters when there's more than one polygon on the screen, and the camera is quite close to the action. Probably because of fan service reasons, but it does mean it's easy to accidentally run into an enemy just outside of shot. The story is the highlight of the game. The story is all about acknowledging that there's more to this world than just good or bad, black and white, this or that, one or the other. And you can feel that the characters are realizing this in their own ways as the story unfolds. My opinion of this game has changed over time. In the past, I probably would have said it's a C or B rank game just because at the time there was no fan service heavy games that were this edgy and had decently fun game mechanics and a good story. The idea and potential of the franchise made Burst more enjoyable. In fact, we could already see the future of the franchise. In Japan, Shinobi vs. was already out on the Vita when Burst came out in the West. So a lot of us who bought the game at the time did so in order to support the series and hopefully encourage them to bring over the Vita game too. Over time, the later games, with their more refined experiences, ended up taking away that sort of novelty factor of the first game. It's just hard these days to go back and play Burst with all the slowdowns and stuff. Next up is the second game of the series, Senran Kakura Shinobi vs. for the PlayStation Vita and eventually the PC. Like I said, this is the one we were waiting for. We've seen the Japanese gameplay videos and now we could finally play it ourselves. I give this game an A rank. Not only did they do a good job of bringing the franchise into the three-dimensional realm in terms of gameplay, but we got a motorboat load of new characters, since there were two factions added, essentially doubling the amount of characters. The gameplay is fun and fast-paced, and there were no catastrophic slowdowns. Plus, all the etchy was much easier to appreciate with the Vita's better graphical capabilities. While looking pretty good on the small Vita screen, the PC version is very clearly a port of a handheld game. 
While being technically better, things like low resolution textures and low polygon models were really obvious. One really nice thing with the PC version is that the frame rate isn't capped at 30, like on the Vita, so you can go higher. This game also saw the introduction of Yumi, and uh, by the way, is she at this point the series protagonist? These days it's more like Asuka's there by default, and Homura has been pushed farther into the background. Asuka and Yumi are even paired together in um, that DLC for Kandagawa Jet Girls for the PS4, which is Kenichiro Takaki's newest project to be released. So I guess that really says it all. Some people don't like Yumi for various reasons. I don't have a problem with her, but I do like it when Homura occasionally ends up in the spotlight from time to time. Shinobi vs. is part of the PlayStation timeline. That being said, it's not like the events of Burst don't apply. In fact, it's the game that we will talk about next that confirmed the existence of two timelines. And that game is Senran Kakura 2 Deep Crimson on the 3DS. I rank it a B. The gameplay is an evolution of Burst rather than resembling Shinobi vs. The game has a more three-dimensional feel because there is much more space to move up and down on, though it's still a side-scrolling affair. The gameplay is much better than Burst, which is very much due to the lack of performance issues. It's a decently smooth experience and the graphics look better too. Deep Crimson is a Hanzo and Hebijo story, so don't expect the other groups which were introduced in Shinobi Versus to show up. In fact, apparently they just don't exist in this universe. Or if they do, they just aren't in the game. The game did get a lot of negative response from fans, since most people wanted a full 3D game like Shinobi Versus. Going from 3DS to Vita back to 3DS wasn't the best move in the world. But I like that they managed to redeem themselves and make a great 3DS game that runs well and is fun to play. And a really cool addition is that you can do tag team battles, so you can have uh, two characters, which isn't something that you see with the other games. A somewhat amusing oversight is that there's a jump attack you can do over and over again. It's quite cheaty and you can actually see me use it a bunch of times in this footage. But if it's something that bothers you, you just don't have to do it and there you go. There's your challenge back. I made an entire video about Deep Crimson called Playing the Worst Sendron Kagura Game, since it has the lowest aggregate score of all the mainline games. I go into all the details there, and I think it's a game people should take a second look at if they at first dismissed it. Actually, I talk about the first game there as well, so... Now we're going to do a bit more jumping around and we're back in the PlayStation timeline. It's Senran Kagura Estival Versus for the Vita, PS4 and PC. Like Shinobi Versus, I rank this one as an A. But my reasoning for doing so is different. Compared to Shinobi Versus, you can see that Estival Versus is the better looking game. Which makes sense because it was designed mainly to be a PS4 game. There's better lighting, higher resolution textures and more polygons. The Vita version isn't exactly the best looking thing ever, since it had to be squished in order to fit on the cartridge and function on the hardware. But the PS4 and PC versions look and run great. By extension, the fan service packs a bit more punch because of that. There are new finisher mechanics that also enhance the etchy experience, so that's all good. There's a bunch of new characters, which certainly helps as well. Gameplay has also changed. From my perspective as someone who button mashes, Estival Versus feels a bit more difficult. That I'm fine with. In Shinobi Versus, it was easier to just plow through everything. There are people who aren't fond of the changes, but you'll have to bring that topic up with them since I'm ignorant of the specifics. I don't really try and make combos or certain moves. I feel like I have to do more blocking and evading in Estival Versus, which to me makes gameplay more interesting. Also with Shinobi Versus, different special attacks ripped off either the upper or lower portions of your opponent's clothes. But with Estival Versus, that's thankfully not the case. You don't have to choose, it just happens and you go through various stages of undress. I do feel that the overall quality of this story is declining slightly as the games go by. Maybe it's due to the fact that there's more characters, which therefore can make things appear a bit more unfocused. But I also noticed that the story has more lighthearted and silly moments that are probably due to the fact that certain characters have already resolved their story or undergone most of their character development in previous games, but that's fine. There's also a boatload of DLC which I made a video about before. It's quite a long one. A lot of DLC to buy is not really a positive in my mind. Just as a side note, some people may not know that the PC version is missing something compared to its console counterparts. It's the Miss Shinobi contest. It's like a photo contest thing where you make your own compositions. People use things like balloons in a very creative manner, let's say, so the PC version does not include that mode. Next up is Senran Kagura Peach Beach Splash for the PS4 and PC. I give it an S rank. 
Yes, I really enjoyed this game. I'm sure this is not a popular opinion, but that's alright. One of the best parts about Senran Kagura for me are all the creative ways they create fan service, and Peach Beach Splash, or PBS, really delivers in that department. I mean, it's got water guns. Clothing can now get wet and transparent, the clothing damage animations have been suitably adapted, and there's a new finishing move you can do on fallen opponents. So in that regard, PBS is really pushing things. I also like the shooting gameplay. I like shooting games anyway. There's an auto-aim function which you can turn on and off, and two different shooting modes so you can play around with those as you play. I like the variety of water guns, anything from sniper rifle to dual-wielding pistols. It does mean that the character's individual fighting style goes away a little bit, but I think that's alright. There's characters in the beat-em-up games that I don't like to play as because of their fighting styles. In Peach Beach Splash I've noticed that I'm much more likely to use characters that I don't use in the other games, which I find is a positive. Something that is nice is that they did try and preserve some individuality with the melee attacks, which references each character's fighting style and weapon. Despite the S rank rating, I don't believe it's a perfect game. It's mainly the premise and the fun that I had with it which made me rank it that high. Fun is what it's all about after all. But here's some criticism. The maps aren't as varied as I hoped. The pool of maps, pun intended, is a bit small. There's also certain maps where the AI ends up congregating in the middle, which means the rest of the map is essentially useless. There's one in particular that comes to mind, the one with all the platforms. It would have been fun to, you know, be able to jump around all over the place, but everyone just ends up in the dull-looking circular bit on the bottom. Some people may consider this game as a spin-off, and in terms of gameplay it is, but PBS is part of the main story and serves as more than just a side story that you don't really need to know about. It brings together characters introduced in various games, some of which we didn't get in the West. I saw a chart once that someone made during the time PBS launched, which showed which characters came from what game specifically, but I can't find it now. Besides, the creator of Senran Kagura said that this is a game that following games will be based on, so there you go. Next up is the most current mainline game, which is ironically, technically the first game. It's Senran Kagura Burst Renewal for the PS4 and PC. I will give it an S rating as well. Essentially, it's a remake of the 3DS game using the Estival vs. Engine. This is great because like with Neptunia, the first game turned off many potential fans due to the gameplay problems. But now with Burst Renewal, the choice for the first time player is simple. The storyline is the same, but there are additional story missions for the other newer factions, like prequel stories to Shinobi vs. While looking very similar to Estival vs, there are differences in graphics. Burst Renewal is more vivid and saturated, which actually helps in combat. It's much easier to see when you need to block because the indicators of attack are more defined, plus there's an area of effect field which helps. Maybe there's even a chance I've gotten a bit better over the years? That's unlikely now that I say it out loud. I like the more serious tone of the story of the first game, so combined with the 3D gameplay, it makes for a very fun game. A detail I like is that the transformation sequences are different to those of the other games, which is a nice way to differentiate the games a little bit. There are differences between the PS4 and PC versions. The performance is similar with the PS4 having a few slowdowns here and there, but the real difference is that intimacy mode is gone on the PS4 game because, well, I think everyone watching will know who caused that to happen. Oh yeah, I just realized I forgot to uh, even write anything about the performance of PBS, uh, Peach Beach Splash. I'll just mention it quickly now. The PS4 version of Peach Beach Splash is okay when there's not much on the screen, but once a lot of stuff is happening and there's water effects everywhere, it goes to quite low frame rates, actually. The PC game is much better in that regard, and that's the main differences. Anyway, that's the mainline titles dealt with. There are also spin-offs, three games in total, at least those are the ones we got in the West. The first spin-off to be released is Senran Kagura Bon Appetit for the Vita and then later the PC. I have it ranked under D. It's a rhythm game which I find pretty fun actually. Usually it's not my thing, but I did enjoy the premise of this game. Despite being a rhythm game, it's actually not about music, but rather cooking. The Iron Chef style antics combined with all the fan service is pretty funny. This was the first spin-off game and they definitely proved that fan service can be applied to every situation. A theme that will continue as you may know, and we'll see with the next two games later on. So far I've been saying nice things about Bon Appetit despite the D rating, and the reason for that is because after having played it, I don't really see myself playing it again. I thought it was fun to play once or twice, 
I'm good with that, I enjoyed the novelty, and I'll go play something else now. Next up is Senran Kagura Reflections for the Nintendo Switch and PC. It gets a C. Notice how this is the first game since Deep Crimson to be on a Nintendo console again. If you've played the other Senran Kagura games before, except maybe Burst Renewal on the PS4, then you probably have at least seen Intimacy Mode. You can think of Reflections as that, but expand it into a game. It's specifically made to make use of the Switch's haptic feedback and motion controls. The game goes like this. First, you're at a screen and touch various parts of the girl's hands. If you feel and hear a heartbeat, you know it's a good touch. Depending on which part of the hand it is, there are various dream sequences that then happen. So in other words, that's how you play through all the different routes, or select them anyways. Similar to a visual novel. Except these are all not real situations, hence they're called dream sequences. You touch your way through the next event until something pops up that says you can go and play one of the mini games. The mini games are suggestive and often quite funny for various reasons. There are a bunch to unlock and you can use motion controls to do everything, though you can use regular controls too if things get a bit wonky. In that regard, the Switch experience is better because the Steam version doesn't have haptic feedback, at least not with an Xbox One controller, and you don't have the option of motion controls, which you may want. I usually don't, except for the thigh massage thing. It's easier to just use the Joy-Con there. Again, like with Bon Appetit, I like Reflections because of its novelty factor. I do enjoy going through the roots and unlocking CGs as well as the final CG image, but there's a few things that annoy me a little bit. If you're trying to unlock all the illustrations, things do get a bit repetitive. For example, in the touching portion of the gameplay, different body parts correspond to a different color, so it's like a visual representation of a mood. It's a bit difficult finding the correct color sometimes, because you do have to do a playthrough of each color if you want the final illustration. The hand bit is a bit tiresome. You have to wait until the bubble comes up before you know if it's a dream sequence you want to play. They move around from finger to finger as well, so there's no use trying to memorize their location. It just gets annoying going through every finger and getting either a negative response or having to stop and move on to the next one because it's the wrong route. And that way it's like a slow menu that doesn't label its options and then moves things around after each route. It's not terrible or anything, but it makes things a bit repetitive and annoying. I'm also not a huge fan of the fact that girls other than Asuka are DLC you have to pay for. Not particularly tragic during a Steam sale or something, but not really the most consumer-friendly way to approach things either. I also don't see much replayability after going through and completing every character. The last spin-off game is Senran Kagura Peach Ball, which I give a D. Actually, maybe a C. I'm still kind of undecided. But I already made the graphics for it being a D rank. So, yeah, that's what I put it under, I guess. This is a Nintendo Switch and PC game. It's a pinball spin-off where the same cast of girls found in Reflections find themselves turned into animal girls and thrown onto a pinball table. I mean, that sounds logical for a game about ninja girls, right? I do really like the creative fan service and how it's combined with a bunch of funny mini games. In fact, I think the mini games are really good in this one. But there are some very lacking aspects to Peach Ball. For example, there's only two tables. Really? That's kind of lame. Something that really doesn't help with fun is the actual pinball mechanics. Now, normally I'd be cool with a pinball game because of the fan service antics and the humor and all that, but in Peach Ball, I get this feeling that the ball seems to lock into pre-made paths. A bit like when you're playing a racing game with the assists on, and the game traction controls you towards the proper racing line. I don't think that's particularly fun in both instances. My theory is that they thought maybe some fans of the series may not be into pinball or pinball games, and then have difficulty to get to the fan service bits. But why not just have a difficulty level then? Or have multiple difficulty levels, rather? I'm sure everyone who's played Peach Ball and even something like Space Cadet Pinball on Windows 95 will feel how traction control -y Peach Ball is. It's a real bummer. If that aspect was better, plus more tables, then this game could have been a solid B or even A, depending on the execution. So I think that completes the ranking of all Senran Kagura games released in the West. Let me know what you think. I'm sure there are people who have completely different lists. For example, I do know that there are some people who think Shinobi vs. has had the best gameplay out of all the games. Others didn't care for Peach Ball at all, or, you know, same is true with some of the other games that feature different gameplay. Everyone has their different angle on it, which is always interesting. Whatever your opinions are, I hope you found this overview of Senran Kagura fun to watch. 
I enjoyed making this video anyway. We'll take a look at Disgaea at some point in the future. If you have any suggestions for other tier lists, let me know what you'd like to see. I also have an Instagram account, which you can follow. It's at yellowsupernint. Right now on the screen, you should be able to see tier three Patreon subscriber names. You can also help out the channel by becoming a Patreon supporter. Link is in the description. And actually in the description, you'll find all sorts of links to basically everything. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again in the next video.